The Old Testament reading for the last Sunday of the church here is from Isaiah chapter 65. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall be the days of my people, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord, and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like an ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet their bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go gather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you think of the church as only a building, 
on such and such a corner where you go on a Sunday morning because you are listed on the membership rolls and have a mailbox in the narthex of the church, you are like the five virgins without a vessel of oil. For the true church of God is not a place of outward appearances. The church is the kingdom of Christ. The church is the kingdom of faith. The church is the kingdom where Jesus alone rules. So Jesus uses the term the kingdom of heaven in this text, in this parable, because the kingdom of Christ is beyond earth. The kingdom is from heaven, and the kingdom is from the one who made the heavens. For sure, the kingdom of heaven is here among us on earth, but only because of two important entrees. First, because the gospel is preached here in all its purity. And second, because the sacraments are furnished to you just as Jesus said they must be with bread and wine and water. By word and sacrament do you become holy, and by word and sacrament do you remain in his kingdom forever. Earthbound and heavenward, that is the church. She continues forever in joy and gladness, even though the young and the old die within her, and even though men and women weep within her. She believes that Jesus, or she believes exactly what Jesus says, that not even the gates of hell shall prevail against her. The heavenward church is with Christ, as we know, in paradise. There are gathered those who have gone before us, those who have already shouldered the burdens of the day. They await that glorious last day when they will be reunited with their bodies in the resurrection and, and reunited with the living saints who are still upon earth. Those part of the church triumphant, they have no sin, they have no hypocrisy, they have no tears, and there are no false sons or daughters within her veil. But that is not true of the church militant, of the earthbound church. She contains hypocrites and evil men. John the Baptist compared the church to a threshing floor where chaff and wheat were heaped together, and Christ compared to the, ch the church to a net in, where, in which both good fish and bad fish were brought in, and now Christ compares the church to ten virgins waiting for the bridegroom. All ten give a good outward appearance. They all have lamps, they all wait for the bridegroom, and they all get up at the midnight call. But, we are told, five were wise and five were foolish. What was the difference? Well, the five, we are told, wise, they had flasks of oil with their lamps. The five foolish, morons, as they are called in the Greek, they didn't have flasks. And suddenly, and very plainly, all is made clear. The church is revealed. The five wise were in, and the five foolish were out. The coming of the bridegroom reveals the true from the false. No amount of tears will reverse the bridegroom's decision, and not one, not one of the fools will sneak in. All ten virgins are grouped, as we heard last week, as either sheep or goat. The true church is separated from the false. The holy Christian church, then, is the living body of Christ. She is made up of men and women and children scattered throughout the world, and the wise ones, they all agree on the same gospel, and they have the same Christ, and they confess the same Trinity, and they converge around the same sacraments. Their lives are lived in faith and love to this Lord. We Lutherans, we confess this in our apology of the Augsburg Confession about the church. The church in the proper sense is the assembly of saints who truly believe the gospel of Christ and have the Holy Spirit. Nonetheless, 
We grant that many hypocrites and evil men who are mingled with them in this life share an association in outward marks, are members of the church according to this association of outward marks, and therefore can even hold office in the church. Hold office like president and secretary and elder and pastor, yes. Does that mean that the church cannot exist because of evil pastors and evil presidents and even evil secretaries? No. Paul comments upon the pastors of the church in his day from, from his prison cell. He says that some preach Christ from envy and strife, but others from genuine goodwill. The first group preaches Christ from selfish ambition, but the second group preaches Christ out of love. Paul says to be thankful, to be thankful for the content Christ crucified, even though the motive may be wrong. Paul is thankful that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. Yes, you see, even pastors can be foolish morons. In the parable of the ten virgins, we see a mingling of the true with the false, do we not? Only the bridegroom, only he separates when he comes. Until then, give those who have the outward appearance the benefit of the doubt. Outwardly, the church can appear as a noble place. Her pastors can have beautiful robes and they can sing like angels. The church can collect food for the hungry and mittens for the freezing and they can have their lawns green in the summer and her sidewalks all scooped from snow in the winter. She can have beautiful stained glass windows and beautiful processional crosses. She can have high standing people inside her doors as members, mayors and senators and business owners. But the true church, the true church is hidden, hidden under the cross of Christ. Those who need no salvation, no forgiveness of sin, no bloody man on the cross for them, no entombed God waiting for them, no Jesus smashing the head of Satan in a resurrection, they are off fending for themselves. Yes, the true church is hidden, and she knows that the word and the sacraments are efficacious even if and when evil men administer them. Paul, he can preach that in these last days many will have a form of godliness, but when they deny the power of godliness, that is, when they deny Christ's true manhood and Christ's true Godhead, or when they deny Christ's vicarious death on the cross, or when they deny Christ's bodily victorious resurrection from the dead, or when they deny Christ's vindicating ascension into the heavenly realms, then Paul has this advice. Turn away from them. So why didn't the five wise virgins turn away from the foolish virgins while they were waiting for the bridegroom? Because from all outward appearances, the morons were not morons. But when it was revealed by the fools that they had no oil in their vessels, the wise at that point turn away. They tell the morons to go and buy their own oil. So let us judge content and not outward appearance. Let us look for a bridegroom who gives himself for the bride and let us look for a bridegroom who makes us holy by his holiness. And let us be a part of the body of Christ that is always sober, that is always vigilant, that is always waiting for her Lord. Having a breastplate of faith and love that covers our hearts and a helmet of salvation that envelops our minds. Since we are yet in the church middle, middle, uh, militant, battling and fighting and warring, we need that two-edged sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. And though we still not, do not know the outcome of the presidential race 18 days ago, 
we do know the outcome of the struggle for the gospel in the world. The wise win. They enter the palace of the king. They execute justice on the nations and punishments on the peoples. For St. Paul says, Do you not know, saints of the church of Corinth, that you will judge the world? So, Israel, be glad. Zion, rejoice. You are wise. The door to eternity is open to you by your beloved bridegroom. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.